Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is our 2018 NPC USA overall men's bodybuilding champion and new IFBB pro, Shane Stewart. Hey, how's it going? Congratulations. Uh, thank you. It's an honor to, to be on your show. I've been watching your show for, for a few years now. Pretty much got all the Ask Dave's uh, bench watched. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's never, it's never too much knowledge, I always say. Now, Shane, um, interesting story you got because you've been in the military, uh, the Air Force, 20 years. You started competing 17 years ago. And, you know, you really pretty much competed on the regional level for many, many years. Uh, last year was your breakout year at the USA when you played second behind Derek Lunsford. Talk to me about how you got into bodybuilding initially, you know, and and because you your story is interesting because you said you weighed 125 pounds when you joined the Air Force. Yeah. So uh, basically, I got into lifting weights because I joined the basic training, came out of basic training at 155. It's kind of a little uh, chunky, not used <laughs> to having that carrying around that much weight. So I thought I'd start lifting weights and turn it into muscle. And uh, after a few years of training, I met this uh, huge power or a uh, bodybuilder. Uh, that said, hey, you might do pretty good in uh, the show here. I was stationed at Little Rock, Arkansas at the time. And right. and I was like, okay, what do I do? You know, And he's like, okay, buy these posing trunks, get this, get this. <laughs> My first show, uh, I played second uh, in Little Rock. Um, didn't didn't know how to pose, didn't practice posing very good. I probably could have done a little better, yeah. but, uh, you know, you know, it was my first go. And I was like, you know what, let's, let's try it again. I played second out of six, so... Wasn't too bad for my first go. No, now, this is interesting. You said you went to basic training and you gained weight. How do you? I thought you're supposed to lose weight when you go to basic training. Yeah, it's the opposite. If someone's heavy, they normally lose weight, and if you're underweight, you normally gain weight. And I, at the time, I never ate, ate a lot of food, so it'd be like twice a day. Right. So when I got in there, I was a, I guess I'm a nervous eater. So I got nervous. I I would just pound <laughs> cheeseburgers down like they're two bites. <laughs> so, so I gained quite a bit of weight it, just in the six weeks. So, what, were you, now you're obviously about five six or so. So in high school, were you uh, were you an athlete or you know what did you do? Uh, in high school, I I mainly just did martial arts. Mm -hmm. I didn't do too much uh, football or anything. Right. Uh, I don't even know if our school had a wrestling team or I'd probably have done something like that. But I think our school was too small. <laughs> and and where did you go to school? What's where were you again? Uh, I was in Arkansas. Um, I went to Van Buren, and then I finished up in Alma High School. Okay, so it was a pretty small town type of situation. Yeah. yeah. What made you decide you wanted to go into the Air Force? Um, I kind of didn't. My mom was going to pay for my college, and I didn't want to. I was afraid that if I went to college, I'd screw it up, and and then I'd I'd feel indebted to her for her money. And I was like, I can just go to the Air Force and get free preschool. So I was like, okay, this will be the easier way. And then you know, first. Four years, I hated it, and then after I re-enlisted, I, I, my whole mindset changed, and I, I loved the Air Force after that. So, do you think it changed your life in a sense, and air, uh, going into the Air Force at the time you did? Because it oh, seemed yeah, like I, you maybe weren't so confident when you were younger. Yeah, I would have gotten a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> were you a troublemaker in school? What's that? Were you a troublemaker in high school? No, I wasn't a troublemaker. I just hung out with uh, people that did stuff they shouldn't be doing, so I probably would have been right there with them. That, wasn't that the story of most people who enter the military? It's to get away from you know bad influences? Yeah, that that's probably 50%. I'd say some people like did it uh, off of patriotic reasons, but for me, it was just to stay out of trouble. <laughs> well, what happens is a lot of people start out with, with, with their, their troublemakers, and then they become the, the greatest patriots of the, con the country's ever seen. Which right. Is, which is tremendous, you know. Um, is it, you know, weird to see how you transformed, like your family, did they notice the difference, you know, when you entered the military? Because you said you hated it at first, obviously. And at some point, they, they brainwashed you into thinking correctly, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I mean, it's been a slow transition. I haven't really, like, gained a lot of weight at any one point, except basic, I think basic training was, like, the most weight I've gained right. at one time. But, uh it's been a slow transition. Um, my 
obviously everybody that sees me now from back in high school obviously can tell the difference. But right. for me, when I look in the mirror, I, I feel like I'm 125 pounds. <laughs> So when did you when did you think now you also were involved in powerlifting too and you've got some pretty impressive totals you've you've squatted six eleven you benched four sixty five and and deadlift sixty three six thirty three and that uh, meet that you kind of uh, had your personal best seventeen oh six total which is yeah. very very impressive numbers for a guy two hundred pounds um, right. did you were you torn between bodybuilding and powerlifting because a lot of times you got to kind of pick which one you really want to focus most of your energies on yeah I'm I'm uh... I'm torn because of the diet. There's a, you know, like powerlifting diet, I can eat donuts. Right. Uh, bodybuilding diet, I can't do any of that. So I, I'm torn between the diet, but I think I'm a little bit better at bodybuilding than I am powerlifting. So I'm kind of, this year I, I decided to leave out the powerlifting meat that I was going to do just mm. so I could really concentrate on making sure I was lean enough and, and not hurt myself, uh, you know, like 10 weeks out, right. you know, so. But I always enjoy lifting heavy too, so that's that's my favorite thing to do is just lift heavy. It, now it's interesting, you know, when I was doing my wrap up of the USA, I really didn't know very much about you at all. I'll be honest with you, and, but I, I looked at your physique and I and I could tell that you train heavy. And I compared you to Branch Warren. I said, you know, this guy looks like a like a mini Branch Warren when Branch first turned pro, and I had no idea you had a powerlifting back, background. You have a lot of dense, mature muscle in your body. Do you attribute that to all the years of heavy lifting? Oh yeah, it's definitely from that. Even even back when I was competing in the NGA Naturals, uh, like no no one would touch my back or mm -hmm. or my legs. It was that was like my two two spots. That's just from heavy squatting and heavy sure. deadlifts. Sure. Now last year uh, you told me a good story about your your current coach. You had placed really bad, I believe, at the USA in in sixteen. Mm -hmm. And then tell us what happened. So yeah, so in 16, I, I placed uh, 11th, and I had seen my, who's my coach now, Shane, and I told him I really wanted to go with him and, and give it a shot, and he said he would have me battling out for first place uh, in 2017, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm, I'm skeptical, but I was like, you know what, it's, he's probably going to be able to keep me on track better than I can keep myself on track, <laughs> so uh, there we were, you know, first and second. So yeah. I was right up there with him. You and Lunsford battled it out on that on that stage, and Lunsford obviously went on to some great things, you know, winning Tampa uh, yeah. and then going to the Olympia place in top five. So uh, you were in certainly good company. Yeah. <laughs> that was inspiration. Seeing him go just that far, that quick, I was like, I never really believed I could ever compete with the guys at the Olympia until I seen him up there, and I was like, I wasn't that far off. Yeah, no, you were right there. I remember last year. Now, now, what's interesting is that, you know, a lot of times we see guys, they don't want to, they have no patience. They want to do, they jump in, they want to turn pro one year, and then they want to be on the Olympia stage the next year. And that's just not the case for most people. Like, you're a true testament to a guy that hard work over a long period of time pans out to great results. I mean, you, you're, you're not a young guy. You're not, like, in your 20s. And you've been training for, you know, seven, competing for 17 years now, and you finally got the pro card. Does it feel like you've been validated, you know, now that all that hard work you put in has finally, you know, gotten you the so-called so diploma from the, uh, the amateurs? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, I mean, even hearing when I, I watch the, the uh, USA recap from you and hearing my name, it's like, hey, he's talking about me. I've never, <laughs> I feel like a, a celebrity. Like, right. this is pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's a definite step, a huge milestone to, right. to make pro. Now, a lot of these guys now that just turn pro at the USA are jumping into this weekend's Tampa Pro. Um, had that come across your mind at all? Hey, maybe I'll test myself out and see how I do? Yeah, it, originally I, I thought that plan would be a good idea, but I had promised my woman that we'd go camping this weekend. <laughs> uh, so I, I forgot about that. And then uh. my coach was like, oh, let's, let's put on some more weight. So I want to try to get up to around 210 before I... I try to go up there. Right. Uh, I think I would fare better if I had a few more pounds of solid muscle on. Lunsford did pretty good uh, after winning the light heavyweight class. So you might yeah. have uh, you might have done pretty well also. Do, do you feel that that two twelve division is your is your category? Oh uh, yeah, there's no way. I, the heaviest I've been in the off season is two twenty. Oh okay. So I'm 
uh, I'll struggle to. I'm going to struggle this year to try to get to 230. Will be my off season right. goal to try to get me right around the 210 mark. Do you still have trouble eating? Is that is that your limitation at this point? Yeah, it's not eating enough. I see people who can put down some food, but I, I just have, I don't know. I get sick way too easy, to, so I, I end up having to. I can spread them out, but this year I'm going to try to stretch my stomach a little more. Right. Now, explain to us what what do you do in the Air Force? Like, what's your full time uh, position there at this point after being there for 20 years? Uh, right now, I'm a, it's called the production superintendent. Basically, just uh, manage uh, all the uh, jobs on the aircraft so if aircraft's broke for uh, a certain shop i'll get I'll make sure that shop gets out to the aircraft and fixes it and set priorities mm. based on which aircraft has what mission right now so. these these current aircrafts that we have in our in our military are like spaceships they're like crazy i mean do you have to constantly go for continuing education to learn how to you know fix these computer systems and all these crazy stuff that they got in there yeah, I mean, it depends on your AFSC, depends on what your job is. Uh -huh. Like for my original job of aircraft structural maintenance, it was, you know, structure is structure, fiberglass, oh, I gotcha. steel, like, you know. But uh, the guys who are, are in avionics that are working on, you know, the computer systems, uh -huh. those constantly get upgraded and they constantly have to go back to get uh, schooling. But for, for my job, I don't have to do that because the metal metal never changes. Carbon sure. fiber is the same. <laughs> now, when you go, I always wonder this. When you go into the Air Force, because there's different branches of the military, obviously, does everyone learn how to fly a plane or is it, or is it just the people who want to be pilots? Yeah, you got you to gotta be a pilot. So, yeah, that's definitely not the case. Okay. There's all kinds of different jobs, security forces, hmm. um, services where they, they cook the food. Right. You know, basically anything that's on an Air Force base, uh, there's a job for it. So uh, everybody has their own job. Pilots fly because you don't – I don't think you'd want someone that, you know, <laughs> I don't know. That would be a little dangerous. So just, I'm going to fix my air, own aircraft and then <laughs> – <laughs> Some people are just jack of all trades. They can do everything. I just didn't know. Maybe you knew how to fly anyway just because you're in the Air no, Force. No, I, I would not try to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Now, have you ever been stationed overseas, or it's always been uh, domestically you've been here? Yeah, I've, I've been stationed at uh, Okinawa, Japan, at Kadena Air Force Base. How uh, long was that? Uh, that was a three-year tour, and it was awesome. I, I tried staying overseas, but I ended up getting sent to Utah. So, What's you know. in Utah that, that you've been there so long? Oh, uh, in Utah, I was, I was there for about uh, five or six years. I uh, worked on F-16s. Nice. So, and then, and then the reason why I left there was because they were going to shut down and and get some F-35s. So one of the squadrons was going to shut down, and I had right. to pick a base because I'd been there for over four years, and I was wow. probably going to get, you know, like some crappy base. So I got to pick, pick a base and pick California. And it's a beautiful place over here. Just don't like the taxes and all the. Oh, crazy I know it's expensive stuff. where you live in. Very expensive yeah. up there. You're in like Northern California, right by San Francisco. Yeah, that's not that's Silicon Valley, you know, in the area. Yeah. Up there. yeah. <laughs> Do you um, so I guess, you know, like I said, you want to put some size on. So what would you say, you know, what's the goal for next year? Do you have a, a pro debut picked out yet? Yeah, I want to do the Tampa Bay Pro. I want to give a good solid year off, uh, making sure that I can put on that weight right. and uh, and then give me about 20 weeks to diet again and uh, try to. You know, do what Derek did, basically. You know, I, uh, you know, that was inspirational what he did last year. So I've been. That's kind of my goal is to try. Let's see if we can't hit hit the Tampa Bay Pro and get qualified for the Olympia, and yeah. that would be that'd be the ultimate goal. But you know, yeah, everyone else is thinking the same thing. So <laughs> it's all right if you're better than them, then then you do it. I yeah, I think it's a good plan. I think it gives you a full year to kind of you know get better. And then obviously this would be the last qualifier before the 2019 Olympia. So if you did win, you know, you probably, you know, that would be a great little feather in your cap to finish off the year with the Olympia. So I think it's a good strategy. Uh, anyone else you want to thank out there? You know, Shane, I'm sure you have a lot of people that supported you through this competition. Oh, you know, my family, uh, they had to put up with the uh, zero carbs uh, <laughs> anger. <laughs> so uh, I give them props for, for uh, supporting me and, uh, you know, not getting too pissed that I was so angry. <laughs> I thought you were going to say zero gravity for a minute. I'm still stuck on the whole Air Force thing, but uh, zero carbs would have to be worse than zero gravity, I guess. 
Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations again on the big win. Enjoy the spoils of your victory. It doesn't last very long, and uh, uh, mm-hmm. pretty proud of you. You beat a good group of guys up there. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. All right, and guys, and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.